Hey, everybody, thanks for joining us at PBR.com as well as CBSSportsNetwork.com. The serious one. He's the two-time PBR world champion, Justin McBride. I'm Craig Hummer. We had a lot of fun this weekend. It was pure PBR telecast two times on CBS Sports Network. Mac, nobody had more fun than J.R. Vieta. Yeah, he rode outstanding all week long. And what I like about this guy is he's starting to ride bulls really good away from his hand. He's, he's our leader in 90-point rides so far this season. Some of those have came on bulls that went away from his hand. So that's telling me he's really completing the whole package at this point. JR with the win actually moved up to second overall in the world standings. Also in that mix, world number one yet again, Mike Lee, the 2004 PBR world champ, with yet another incredibly consistent weekend. Yeah, and, and Mike Lee, he's going to get some attention. And we've been talking about him a lot already in this young season. Galermi March, he's going to get a lot of attention. J.B. Mooney, when he comes back, always going to garner a lot of attention. For me, I think it's a benefit for J.R. to just fly under the radar. I mean, there's no accident that this guy's number two in the world right now. He finished last year really high. This is a guy that's shown up week in, week out, and rides really good. You mentioned J.B. Mooney, not here because of an injury. You and Shorty had an interest, interesting dynamic or discussion, I should say, during the shows about what that does to the locker room dynamic and whether there has to be a true leader amongst those guys. What do you think about that? Well, and I don't think a, a leader always comes in the sense of a, a raw, raw guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's not the guy that's going around talking to everybody and, and becoming everybody's best friend. It's just a guy that, that everybody else in that locker room have a certain level of respect for because they know if they don't step up their game, there's no chance they're going to beat him. There were some big names in the Build Ford Tough Championship round. We always come to expect that. But there were some names we don't often see. Brady Sims, Matt Triplett, Marcus Mariluch went in with the first pick in the draft. Talk about what that means for a young rider to get that chance to finally face those big bulls. And even though those three guys didn't convert in the championship round, they got that valuable time out on a bull like that. Well, and you're talking about valuable experience mm -hmm. of, of getting that opportunity. With Marcus Merluch coming back first, having the first pick in the draft, all these things just happen to stay on your bull to win the event. Those are situations that it's great that he got to experience that because I think next time he comes back in the first place, he capitalizes it. He almost did today. Marcus Merluch finishes fourth in the St. Louis event, and you were the last man to come out on Apollo. What happened? Well, he had a little slug back, and he was just trying to get my feet the whole time, and I finally got him, and kind of jerked me down, and this sucked. Frustrating. After the ride, a lot of people came up and said, good try, way to go at it. What's that fine line between giving it your all and maybe overdoing it just ever so slightly? Well, I was giving it my all. I was trying to get him road. He just got lucky today. I'm going to get him again, and it won't end that way. Your confidence seems to have been building lately. How's that going? Yeah, I feel good. I've been riding good. And just at every bull, I'm sliding up there, not thinking about nothing. I'm just trying to ride everyone. What is it that you most appreciate about being on the Built for Tough series? and seated in. Um, the thing I appreciate it most is it's, it's, you're riding you for the most money. The sponsors here, the and this is where the Good baddest effort. guys are Good in the baddest ball. pools, and I think I'm one of those guys, so this is where you want to be. I don't want to, you know, like get the knife and twist it a little bit more, but it has to hurt when you buck off that last bull knowing that about 35 plus thousand dollars just slipped through your fingers. Yeah, I was pretty butthurt about it. <laughs> it was, uh, it was, uh, I don't know. It's just frustrating, you know. You come in, win in the event, and I had a bull that I could ride. He just got lucky today, and I'm still frustrated about it. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. J.R. Vieira sealed the deal on SmackDown. It seems like that has become his go-to bull. If you were still riding today, would that be one you liked, or which one would be your guy, the well that you always went to? Well, you know, I think he would definitely be one SmackDown because you know every time you get on him, you're going to be over 90 <laughs> points if you can ride the bull. Uh, I was that way with, with Mudslinger mm -hmm. back in the day. It, what, we didn't get to pick him, but I drew the bull like seven different times. And you knew every time you got on him, he was going to feel great, and you had a chance to be a lot of points. All right. Well, next weekend, Kansas City. Then I'll see you again a couple weeks from now at the Iron Cowboy. That's not going to be one you want to miss. Hope to see you there.